My name is Georgia Mackey Burnett. I'm a senior Buffalonian born on the east side of Buffalo in 1929. In the video you're about to see, founding members of the Buffalonians Reunions Committee will share their views on the origins and successes in their efforts to create a once-in-a-lifetime series of events. Their stories will capture an extraordinary period of time when 1,000 Buffalonians gathered every three years to renew old friendships and reminisce about growing up black in Buffalo from the 1920s to the 1950s. The Buffalonians reunion spanned a period of 18 years from 1980 to 1998. It was the largest gathering of the largest reunion of friends ever held in the city. I feel it is important that future generations understand the value of childhood friendships and the role in preserving a sense of community. The reunions allowed us to recall good times and old friends who lived in a strong, vibrant black community. We wish to thank the Afro-American Historical Society of the Niagara Frontier for making it possible that our stories become a permanent part of Western New York history. Back in about 1977 or 78, a group of us were at a funeral home saying goodbye to one of our dear friends who had just recently passed. And at the time, it came, thought came to me, why are we meeting this way every few months saying goodbye to somebody? It should be a time that we are more relaxed and have a good time. And this went on for oh, almost a whole year, keep coming back to the same funeral home. Two years later, in 79, I called the friends together to see what we could do about getting the gang together. And we sat down and we talked and hashed it over for a while. And the only thing we come up with that nobody had a yard big enough for the whole gang. And also, we'd have to contend with the weather at the different times. We fooled around, we decided we'd have a dinner and a dance, and a breakfast the next day. We decided to figure out a name to call ourselves. After hacking around for a, an hour or so, we decided on the name the Buffalonians. We met at Marion Powell's house, and he had assembled maybe 10 or 12 people that he knew, male and female, to uh, get this committee started. and. Uh, uh, we, were, we were just playing it by ear because this, this was all new to us, but we had desire. We knew what we wanted to do. We knew we were going to enjoy it. Okay, I can mention some of the, some of the names of the original committee members. Uh, George, will, will, you, you can clue us in later on. Henry Van Lanningham, June Earl, Ray Walton, Marion Powell, Arika Messiah, Harold Robinson, God rest him, Harry Struthers, ditto, uh, Teresa White, uh, Sumner Nunley, Al Riding, and Larry Childers, last but not least. Now, I probably left some of them out, but uh, as far as my memory goes, that's, that's, those were some of the original members. My name is Teresa White, and uh, I became aware of the uh, need and desire to have a committee uh, when I received a letter from Henry Van Landingham that the boys had been commenting about what a good uh, a time we had and uh, how much, since they'd been away and come back, how much they enjoyed the community and what they thought they had gotten out of it. 
when we were growing up. Back in those days, uh, if you went to high school, you either went to Hutchinson High School or Fosdick Maston. I'll say 95% of the black students went to those two schools. And he originally he wanted to get together just the group from the two schools, from the two schools. But then, but then after talking over with the committee, we decided that uh, anybody that we knew from Buffalo, that used to live in Buffalo, we'd notify them and they'd be glad to come. And they, they were glad to come, believe me. We made out a tentative list of, of committee headings uh, and I decided that, that I would take a, um, I wanted to be part of the Hotel Reservations Committee. To me, that sounded like something I could handle. And, and, and I, I picked a few committee members to go with me. And what we were looking for was a hotel that would give us a decent rate and also could, could block off a certain number of rooms. And we had a choice of maybe three or four hotels. Uh, and of course, I, we shopped around for the best price. And, and I took this job every three years because I, I developed a rapport with the, with the hotel people, with the, with, with the reservations managers, you know. And each year they'd give me a better deal than they did the year before. Now, I also found out that even though we blocked off the same number, a certain number of rooms, the majority of people like to stay, when they came, they like to stay with friends and relatives in Buffalo. And, and that's what they did. But there were still some that utilized the hotel rooms, and they appreciated the idea that we had, uh, that we blocked them off. And then we also would furnish a, a, a car to pick them up and take them to the affair. And we, we tried to make convenient for them as possible. We learned a lot of this by trial and error, but we did it. So we decided that we would go to Sheridan East. And we made arrangements with Sheridan East for the dinner and for our breakfast the next morning. We had to decide about the cost of the tickets, which would include both the dinner, the dance, the dinner, and brunch the next day. And we had to try to come up with something that would be reasonable at the time. But before we could do any of that, the eight of us that were there, we had to agree to put up a hundred dollars a piece okay. Okay. to get it started. And we, that's what we did. And we came up with a pretty close to a thousand dollars the time we got money from, saved from maybe a couple or individual. They needed a secretary. And I'm sitting there and somebody said, well, June, how about you being a, a secretary? Be yeah. And I said, I thought about it. I said, you know, I'm secretary of this organization. I'm secretary. <laughs> I said, that's all I seem to be. You were the professional secretary. Yeah. That's, that's the way I was at the Urban League. I was a secretary. and. I was just secretary, this, you know, and so uh, it's it. It's it. And I was pleased because I didn't know something about shorthand and whatever. And I said, okay, you know, I said, you know, I'd be glad to do that. Oh, my name's Pauline D. Childers, and I, I worked with the uh, decorating committee along with Arika Messiah. My name is Arika Caldwell Messiah. And I'm known as R-I-C-A, just Rika, Messiah. And what was your committee? What committee did you work on while you were in Well, I did a little bit of everything, but basically Pauline Childers and I always came up with uh, what was going to be the, either the theme or the decorations for each affair. Okay, so the two of you kind of did the decorations committee? Yes, and we, 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 pl we planned it. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, the yeah, and, and of course, we always had input of the rest of the group, noisy input. But uh, uh, Pauline Childers and I, we always wanted big flash and dash. And uh, we, so it was our job to convince people what we thought was going to be uh, just marvelous. And usually we were pretty good in convincing the group to go along with us. Well, they knew I decorated because with the Harriet Tubman group, I was decorating there. And so they knew that uh, I decorated, and so they just said, well, decorations. And Rika, she's good too. So the two of us compliment, we compliment each other. Oh, the event itself, well, usually we went in on the night before. We, we were trying, and that was practically in our contract, that we'd be able to get in um, 
the night before. The first uh, event was at uh, out at the Sheridan, and then the second one was at the Hotel Sattler. And that year, I made banners. And on the banners, I put the names of all the old places that we used to go as, as youth. Moon Glow, Little Harlem, uh, just all of those places. And I, and I hung those all over, you know, the um, uh, Statler, that yeah. big hall there. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then another year, we had a um, memory lane. We, uh, we took a lot of old pictures. I have some of them there. And uh, uh, we made copies so that if the people wanted to take a picture, they could have it. And we made just copies of you know, old groups like the Weblos and the Athlos and uh, any group uh, that we had pictures of. Pauline was very good at doing crafts and things. So we always did some kind of uh, fancy kind of uh, decoration for the tables. And we, and we made arrangements with different florists and, uh, who were very helpful. And we always got things, some things from the Buffalo Chamber of Commerce cooperated with us. And sometimes they would give us uh, items for it. So uh, it was just a fun thing working with uh, the different business places and the Chamber of Commerce of getting some things that we could get for our, because we always had a goodie bag. The first affair was very emotional because after we sent out all the letters to everybody that everybody knew, and some people that we didn't know, but we knew they were old Buffalonians, uh, people just responded to it. And they came from California, from Florida, from uh, Seattle, Washington, from France, from, uh, We had uh, one uh, man who was in the service, and he came from Germany, and it was really well responded to, and it was such a huge success that we said, we ought to do this again. So we decided that we would do it every three years. The food manager of the hotel got very upset. She was afraid that the food was no good, and we tried to explain to her that the persons and all the other people were so busy visiting each other, they didn't have time to eat. The amount of people that showed up at the affair and at the hotel always amazed us every year. I think our largest year, we sent out over a thousand invitations. And, and of that number, 960 people showed up. And I thought that was pretty damn good. We were very surprised to make a profit when we decided that we would take nothing for ourselves. After putting some of the money aside for our next event, we donated our funds to the NAACP and the Urban League. The places that we had our dance, the first one was shared in the East, the second one was at the Gold Ballroom of the Statler, which was the, the last big affair held at the Statler before they closed. Yeah. You were there too. We had the terrace room for a cocktail party and the gold ballroom for the dance. It was really beautiful to see these people coming across the center of the hotel from the terrace room to the gold ballroom. Everybody looking like they were Queen Anne. It was really funny. And it, people hugging and crying and everything because they hadn't seen somebody in 20 years or 30 years or something like that. And uh, it, it was very, very, very emotional. It was very nice. And what was unique about it, there were, it was never designed for speeches or, or programs or entertainment. It was just a matter of bringing folks together so they could say hello and wish each other well. Along with my wife, I was invited to join the committee. And we attended a few meetings in 1993 and I was subsequently asked to serve as the chairperson. Okay. Taking on that responsibility as chairperson, I was quick to, to mention to all of the members that I felt that it was just standing in, that I was just standing in for Henry Van Landingham, who had brought this whole experience about. By that time, Henry Van Landingham had moved to Florida, but he came back as early as he could 
probably in the spring. And he 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 brought uh, Mr. Evans to the to, to the to the meeting here. Yeah. Now I didn't know Mr. Evans. I knew his sister. I knew Dolores and Eleanor, but I didn't know Mr. Evans. He was one of the younger ones. But as everybody knows, he he was the man for the job. It really was very well received, and, and he did a hell of a job, just as good as any of us or Henry Van Landen could, because he knew he knew how to hold people together. He knew how to how to take care of the different personalities, <laughs> the the some of the weirdos in there, including myself. <laughs> he knew how to handle that. When we first started, uh, Willie and I were just part of the general committee. You know, we went to meetings. We helped wherever we were asked to help. Uh, and of course, at the end, it was always the decoration. Everybody on the committee was involved in decorating. Uh, then I was asked uh, to do publicity. So for one uh, term, I would uh, write up communications, which would be approved by the committee. And then they were published in the Buffalo News, the Criterion, wherever I could have them published. All Rick and Messiah and um, Pauline Child has began to develop themes over a period of years. And so one year they said, let's try uh, uh, inviting those folks who are extending an invitation for those who would like to, to wear African garb, uh, uh, because she suspect, they suspect that many had some of these types of uh, clothing, and uh, this would be a fun time to, to wear them. What I enjoyed mostly was meeting the people when they came, when they came back to Buffalo, even though many of them had left. Some 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 had left, never never wanting to return again. But they came back, and they were glad to see us, and we were glad to see them. And the social part was the main thing. Like as I mentioned earlier, I used to have a group come to my house. I tried to keep it down to about thirty or forty people, which meant fifty people. And different houses, different groups had their own had their own parties, and uh, that that was that was the thing, the social part, the, the camaraderie, as you know. Uh, Buffalo doesn't hold that many attractions, <laughs> so the the people had to be the thing that brought them here, and they came year after year. Every three years, they come year after. Even right now, I get stopped at the at the at the Y and different at church in different places. Wonder when are you going to have another reunion? I said, when are you going to have another reunion? Uh, 1998 was the last affair, and um, the first couple of meetings that we had. Uh, after that, uh, it was apparent uh, several members had indicated that they would not uh, be continuing on the committee for health reasons, and uh, the vote was taken to, to disband, unfortunately. And when we got to that meeting, it was, it was like a consensus, and everybody just took this deep breath and said, you know, this is the time. I can't do it. I'm not feeling well. I'm planning on moving. Dolores had moved to Miami. Uh, the committee as a whole just wasn't uh, of the same frame of mind to continue with it. So uh, it just was the time to, to end it. I think you have a sense that this is it. You can't do it anymore. Everything runs its course. And I think for some people, when we had like the death of Kitts and Powell and the death of Eugene Kirk, who was, uh, Eugene was was, uh, uh, you, I think he was our financial, one of our financial people who, uh, uh, and that was important. And we can't forget Sis Powell mm -hmm. because all of our meetings were at the Lutheran Church mm -hmm. and uh, Sis saw that we had, we had coffee. Mm -hmm. We had everything we needed and uh, she always saw the notes got run off. And Sis had a way of connecting with so many people. And um, so that uh, we can't, uh, it, uh, Sis was there for everybody <laughs> and saw that everything was, you know, taken care of. So I think she was one of the, uh, I guess we had a lot of several people who were uh, just wonderful about keeping the group together. And, uh, and, and, and we always had the, like a home there at uh, the Lutheran Church. We loved one, one another. If anybody got sick, cards were sent out. We asked how that member was, how he was doing, when will he be back in. We didn't push anybody out once they were in. We, you know, we were like that. Uh -huh. 
because we're, uh, we're yeah, good that's right, that's right. And then our parents, we knew their parents. You know, it was like a an old homecoming. It was a party. We would all get together, and uh, and well, for one, we had the freedom to, and the sense of humor that uh, what people, if, if something was annoying to them or, or something they would like better, everybody knew that they could say what they felt and it would t be taken as given. And I think that was very unusual because if you didn't know us and you came into the group, people would think, what in the world? But I think we were very, very unusual because everyone was allowed to say what they, how they felt, what they thought, and it, was, and it was always given consideration. They were a wonderful, unique group of people. And again, as an outsider, I could see, and of course I was a teacher, and you could see these people being kindergartners and being in grammar school. You could see the one who was pulling the person's hair. You could see the one who was sticking somebody. I mean, they, they had this incredible, incredible relationship, that, you know, that they, they grew up together with all of the foibles that young people have, but yet had a, um, a love for each other. They won't use that word love, ever, but they had a love and a connection for each other that I have never, ever seen in another group of people, ever. They are just marvelous, marvelous people. I enjoyed seeing the people every, every three years, and uh, it was a very nice affair. We never had any problems. People were well-behaved. These were mostly folks that came out of the war years. Uh, they had unique experience, uh, probably. Second World War. Second World War, World War II, uh, for many minorities at the time. And they came back with a determination just to do things in their own lives. So subsequently, when they began planning this affair, it seemed as though that uh, they had all the, the initiative and the energy to accomplish a goal. And so they, um, they, they met and they, they really didn't work hard, they just worked. And uh, the, uh, the results have, um, have, have distinguished, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, all of the individuals from the original group. The greatest reunion on record was when two brothers who had not been speaking to each other because of some small problems were reunited at this affair. We all met old friends and made new ones. Other reunions were held every three years and continued for 15 years. This activity could be huge success again if we tried. Our membership grew to 30 persons with some ideas. Just get together for fun. <laughs>